Previously, we talked about white balance, but in this video, we're gonna talk about the other aspect of controlling color, which is tint. These videos are organized as a playlist so that you can easily navigate learning off-camera flash. The playlist and all video topics are linked in the description below if you want to navigate to a different part. My channel is sponsored by Adorama, which buys me the time to create these type of videos without the influence from any specific camera brand. I personally shop at Adorama for their great deals on a wide selection of products, as well as their support of those products down the road. So if you end up interested in any of the equipment used in this video, you can find links to those in the description below. So if you've ever been in Lightroom, you know that there are two sliders that you can use to control the colors globally in your image. There's the white balance slider which adjusts how cool or warm your image is and there's the tint slider which adjusts how green or magenta it is. Now if you're working outdoors you might never touch that tint slider because the light quality that you're getting just doesn't have a green or magenta cast to it. But there are light sources out there that do have either a magenta or green color cast to them. Low quality LED lighting can have a tint to it but the most common offender is by far fluorescent lighting. And it's more complicated than just a tint issue because fluorescent lights flicker. They are a pulsating light source, so sometimes you get a split color cast. They also are available anywhere from 6500 Kelvin all the way down to a warm white 3200 Kelvin to emulate tungsten lighting. Now my first choice when it comes to dealing with fluorescent lighting is to just leave, is to go to a different location, right? Because fluorescent lighting just leads to a number of problems. But sometimes you have to deal with the hand that you're dealt and you just have to work in fluorescent lighting. So I decided to purposely seek out that environment and give you guys a quick tutorial on how I would handle that situation. In this hallway, we have white walls and fluorescent lighting. The fluorescent lighting is not only around 3200 Kelvin, a very warm lighting, but it also has a green cast to it. I identify the white balance by shooting the pure white wall because it's very neutral and it gives me a clean reading of what the white balance and the tint issues are. And in this instance, it was 3200 Kelvin and M3 on my Sony camera, which just means about plus 30 of magenta. Now that means that the light has a green cast to it, so the camera has to add plus 30 magenta in order to neutralize that green color cast. Now we've previously identified that if we wanna use flash on a subject with a tungsten ambient environment, then we're going to have to gel our flash with a full CTO gel. But there's still an issue because wherever the ambient light is hitting or filling in shadows, it's going to have a green cast to it because of the green cast from the fluorescent lighting. Since my flash still isn't balanced with the tint of the ambient light, that means one of two things. Either my flash is going to appear too magenta or my ambient light is going to appear too green. The solution is to add a green gel in addition to the CTO gel on top of your flash. This makes your flash more green, just like the ambient lighting, and creates a balance between the ambient light and the flash. Now you can select one white balance setting that will apply to the entire image. The tough part here is having the appropriate gel. You either need a plus green or half plus green, something to add green to your flash, but I will say, the older that fluorescent lighting gets, the more that it seems to suffer from a tint issue. It can just be a quality thing too. A lower quality fluorescent might have more of a tint than a higher quality fluorescent light. Even if you have a plus green in your kit, it might not neutralize the color completely and you might still have a little bit of color cast, but it will bring you closer than if you didn't have it on at all. Thanks for watching guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. I really hope that you learned something new about flash photography. I suggest going and practicing the concepts that you just learned, but if you feel that you've already got a good grasp on it, then go ahead and proceed to the next video, which you can find in the end screen or in the description below. If you're enjoying my channel and you wanna see more, then please hit that subscribe button and click the bell if you'd like notifications for when I post new videos. Until next time, keep on shooting.